Hi, one of the age-old problems in electronics is soldering smoke. Check it out. Oh, look at this. Oh. <coughs> Beautiful. Put air on your chest. Oh my God, like, yeah, it's not good. And by the way, those fumes there are not lead fumes. Um, it doesn't matter if you use lead or lead-free soldering, you get those fumes. It comes from the rosin flux, which is, uh, rosin is actually a uh, tree sap type stuff. There's actually multiple cores inside your solder like that, or you can get separate uh, flux as well, either like a gel or a liquid uh, type flux, and that's where the fumes come from. Anyway, a bit of myth busting there, but anyway, solder smoke, one of the solder fumes, one of the age-old problems, and usually you can either, well, suck it up butter cup, put hair on your chest, or you might have, say, like a little fan on your uh, bench that just, uh, you know, blows air across, so it just gets it out of your face, which might be an okay solution if you've got, like, ventilation, if you've, like, got an open uh, door or an open roller door in your garage or something like that, but if, like me, you're in a lab, uh, a confined lab environment like this. In fact, in, at the moment, you might hear a little bit of an echo. I'm actually in a, like a little confined cubicle here. There's glass walls here and you know, <laughs> there's no ventilation at all. So you need a fume extractor, which at least attempts to filter the smoke. And you've got traditional ones here. I've got a Pace uh, fume extractor in like this uh, square size one. You might be more familiar with these ones. You can pick these up for, you know, 10 bucks on eBay or something like that. These are pretty crappy. I don't recommend it. They're actually, um, I think I've done a second channel video with uh, David too about like you get a real dodgy one and yeah, um, <laughs> they can like, the motors can burn out. They're not rated, uh, especially for 240 or 245 volts that I've got here in the lab. Anyway, these these things are, uh, well, they're better than nothing, but if I turn this on, A, well, this one's actually not too loud. Noise is one thing, and if I start soldering, I'll show you up close there, and hopefully you can see that a good lot of the fumes are going in there and being captured, but some of them are coming right over the top, like this, because you've got a, a distance gap. I mean, if you go any, if I go right to the edge of the board, these things are just going straight up in the air right in my face. So, you know, you have to be reasonably close to these things in order to get most of the fumes actually sucked under there like that. So yeah, they have a problem with the, these uh, feet. They try to stop them uh, falling over and well, you know, it just spaces everything out. So you've got to be really close. Same thing for these ones as well. If I turn this one on, this one's really loud. I've got two of these. I've done a second channel video where I actually uh, modified the fan in this to be much lower noise for when I'm shooting videos and stuff like that. But you've got, you know, a similar sort of problem here. Okay, this one is sucking in Sucking in the fumes, doing okay there. But you go a bit further back, a bit further back, and... Oh, wait, no, it's starting to miss some now. They're starting to come up. So you've got to be, like, really close to these things. And the other thing with these is, is that the carbon filters in these, they're not that terrific. If you actually stick your nose on the back of these things, you can actually um, smell the crap coming out of here. They're actually very poor. You can get really poor ones and you can get uh, okay ones, but they're still not very good filters. They're certainly not HEPA quality. And the reason both of these are actually quite poor filters is that all they got it's just one of these, like they call them like a charcoal filter. It's like some of them like aren't even charcoal. They're just like, like almost like anti-static foam, just crap quality foam kind of thing. And I don't know what particulate size these things would take out, but like they're very porous. Look at that. Uh, you can just see like through these things, you hold them up to the light and no, these things are just hopeless. We need something better. We need a better HEPA quality filter. And I've done a video on what makes a good lab HEPA air filter, so I'll link that one down below at the end if you haven't seen it. So I thought that I'd finally get a proper air filter for the lab. One that's not only a HEPA filter, i.e. it filters down to like 0.3 microns, like 99.97% uh, down to 0.3 microns, but has a nice big flexible arm and ta-da! Here it is, like this. Check this out, isn't this beautiful? 
Um, yes, it is actually coming uh, from under my bench. I'll show you the unit in a minute. But if I switch this bad boy on, not only is it potentially lower noise, this one's actually rated to 55 dB. Uh, so you get the motor noise down at the bottom, but that's uh, potentially hidden under your bench. But also you do get a bit of noise coming from like the, the suction of the air into this sort of thing. But let's give it a burl, shall we? Let's have a look. Oh, there we go. Look at that. Beautiful. And the good thing is, is that this is not on high. This is on its lowest uh, setting, by the way. Good thing is, is that you can just bring it over your work like this. And so you've got, you know, you can work over the full length of the board without being hamstrung by one of these silly things. But let's see if we can get a close up on that. So look, look at that. Hopefully you can see the, the fumes just bend like that. It's just being sucked in. Woo, look at that. Fantastic, and that's on low. I haven't got high suction or anything. And if you go off to one side, it's still gonna suck it in. Fantastic. Wow. So yeah, these things are very cool. Let me show you the unit that I actually got. So as you can see, it's absolutely gigantic. Well, the actual uh, fume extractor box itself is quite small, but it comes with like this thing, which now I'm about a width of a fag paper under 5'9", and this thing's, you know, about six foot uh, tall. So you can really snake this, um, you know, and it come up over your bench like this. You know, a typical bench might be like 900 high or something like that. Yeah, I'm mixing up my feet and my millimeters, whatever. Anyway, um, yeah, it can reach right over the bench and then over my bench is a 900, uh, mill deep it can reach up and over that and into the product and the fact that it's on wheels like this You can just wheel it around the lag because I have that requirement I'm you know sometimes I'm soldering over here where I'm shooting my video Sometimes I'm shooting at my soldering bench or shooting at some rand I was working on my arcade machine I had to take a soldering iron over to the arcade machine and stuff like that So being able to wheel this thing around like that and uh, like it's just really handy. I like it I'll show you up close now, I got this one from a company called uh, Kingsome or Shenzhen Kingsome. And as it turns out, I believe this is the company uh, that actually manufacture the unit for Pace. Now, Pace sell an almost identical uh, unit to this. This one's not as fancy. It's only got the single control, but you can get other ones with like, uh, like 10 speeds and infrared remote control keypad. And I believe that the f uh, Pace one is identical to this. It's just rebranded Pace. And the Pace one, whilst it looks very nice, is like 870 Yankee bucks. I got this one for 225 Yankee bucks. Unfortunately, just because of the size of it, it doesn't weigh a huge amount, but like, um, but because of the size and the two boxes and everything, it cost me another couple of hundred uh, Yankee bucks to get it uh, DHL couriered here. I could have actually got it um, cheaper, but it would have took uh, forever. But yeah, so, but even with the DHL courier, it was to ship it to Australia here was ha less than half the cost of the same pay. Uh, unit. Now, you can get ones that have both a double and single output. I didn't need a double output, so I just went with the smaller single one. And the reason I got this one uh, is because it's, this was rated for a lower noise. It's uh, rated for like 55 dBA, whereas the bigger ones were rated at 60 dBA. And that could make a huge uh, difference, especially for someone like me who's uh, shooting videos. So yeah, it's just a box like that. And this is the KS180 model, rated for uh, 80 watts uh, nominal, but that might uh, go up with the higher speeds. And uh, yeah, you can just get uh, different models. I believe like the, there's the 150, model which is the pace and the um, and the other like Kingsom sell a uh, similar one I think it is like slightly modified or something like that for pace but it's basically the same unit and of course they come with these uh, flex arms like this either one and you can get like different style uh, nozzle attachments they just pop off uh, like that and these are like you know really quite nice you can uh, they're really quite flexible you can snake them around and this is just a uh, friction fit into there it's a bit hard for me to take out so this particular uh, lower end model I've got is only got the single button but you press it multiple times and the lead comes up different colors and it's got three different speeds but the one I was using there was the lowest one um, and yes you get increased noise at the uh, higher uh, speed so the noise on this was it was more than I was kind of expecting but it's acceptable it's certainly less than the much less than the existing pace one I've got uh, on the bench and as I said a lot of that noise is actually confined under the bench so you could actually um, isolate that in some way if you wanted to so let's have a look inside this thing there's just two catches 
on here like this just lifts off very simple and underneath the bottom there uh, we've got some spongy material of course that just helps uh, seal it around there so the air has to go is forced down into the seals now this one actually uses uh, round ones as opposed to the bigger model and the pace one uh, which uses square ones I believe but uh, yeah so I, if anyone's got any internal photos of those uh, please share them but it's basically a three stage filter um, what it is so they're these um like square-ish but it all basically comes down in the middle all right you've got this felt material here which is the first stage filter and this is the 50 micron uh, stuff so that'll take out just like you know your large smoky type things then you've got your HEPA filter around here which is your 0.3 micron uh, HEPA 12 I believe it is HEPA 12 filter so it'll take out not only 99 point uh, 97 percent of uh, particles down to 0.3 microns so that's very nice and then after that they've got this third stage like uh, is it like an activated carbon filter something like that anyway um so yeah it's a three stage filter so there you go it's absolutely <laughs> <laughs> like they're really belt and braces approach so the air has to be sucked down through the center like that and through all three stages of this, of this filter before it actually gets down into the bottom here which then just makes its way inside the case and ultimately down there's some like um, gaps around the uh, outside of that so uh, there's a fan in there I might actually take the screws off there and have a look at the fan for those playing along at home and that's what the bottom looks like uh, your exhaust is just out the bottom like that and there it is that's what we've got inside just a controller board and a nice little um, squirrel cage there you go for all you motor aficionados check it out uh, you can tell me about the quality of that I don't know it's unmarked whatever does the job can suck a golf ball through 40 foot of garden hose and there's the PCB down in there I'm not going to bother to take it apart I can't see the brand on that big cap there anyway we've got all the requisite stuff here we've got a uh, mains input fuse over there we've got a common mode choke and your requisite uh, filtering and stuff like that there's our bridge rectifier so that's a full wave that's a 400 volt cap full wave bridge rectifier gee somebody had fun on the hot snot there look at that celastic that whole lot in that whole connector they really didn't want that to uh, vibrate out so they weren't relying on the little uh, catch there the little clip on there to hold that in but you know man that is what it is there's a little tin, 10 turn trimmer on there so maybe we could uh, get our tongue at the right angle and tweak that will that actually adjust our min max fan because I'd actually like possibly a bit less suction on this thing a lower mode where it will actually give less noise I'm actually happy to trade off uh, noise for suction especially with the big um, arm on this thing you can put it directly almost directly over your work so you really don't need much uh, suction at all but anyway that's all that's in there anyway that's all she wrote I'm not sure where the mains cable just goes over to here yeah I suspect they're using one of the uh, studs there to actually connect uh, the mains through to the chassis but I'll measure it no check this out look connect to our mains plug over here and it's not connected through to mains earth over there but it is connected through to the motor via the wire over to the motor there so yeah so it's got to connect via those four screws through to the chassis so I don't know all well, your regulation out experts out there comment down below and they've got a bit of uh, sound dampener foam in there I don't know why they would do, didn't put it all around but obviously when it uh, shoots out here it's you know it, it's just been uh, uh, baffled by the foam internally there so it's okay maybe they could have got the sound down a bit better but you know <laughs> like it's only 220 bucks so there you go that's a look at the Kingsome HEPA flexible arm soldering fume extractor when they sell them they advertise under for like nail salons and you know uh, stuff like that as well you'll probably see that I don't know, I've never had my nails done but you go in there and they're you know wearing their masks as you do these days and they you know got their fume extractors because they're you know grinding away nails or doing whatever they do I don't know so you might find them like cheaply advertised under that but yeah I think these things are great like 220 bucks US it's actually really affordable so almost like the postage 
package costs the same amount or more. You can get it cheaper, it depends how fast you want it. So if you get the uh, slow boat from China, you can probably get it delivered really cheap. So well worth it. I know you can actually cobble together. People do cobble together their own like flexible arm air filters like this. And if you know where to buy this sort of stuff, uh, please link it in down below, this flexible uh, tube. And it's got to be uh, specific ones designed that are, of course, you know, fairly airtight. These ones feel tight as a nun's nasty, right? You know, all the joints in there and stuff like that. It feels, you know, feels really good. It's got a nice wide nuzzle. I like that because boards are typically like long and wide-ish and things like that. So it covers the whole area. The only downside is that it's probably not as quiet as I was hoping for. I know I did give the rating 55 dB. I'm not going to bother to measure it. Certainly quieter than the pace one I've got. Not as quiet as my modified pace one, but the suction is vastly better with this thing. I don't think I'd ever use it on the second or third setting. I was using it on the lower setting and that's just absolutely like plenty. Um, as I said, it could have probably had a uh, lower setting as well would have been nice. But anyway, yeah, I think this is a winner for 220 US bucks. So if you take your health seriously, and you should, um, it's well worth spending the coin uh, for one of these things. And not that expensive. I'm pretty impressed by these. Um, the value for money, winner, winner chicken dinner. So I'll put in links down below. I got this one from Alibaba. Um, AliExpress have a couple, but they didn't have the Kingsom uh, brand, but I'll put in some links down below. You can also buy these on eBay, but they were more expensive on eBay, at least for Australia anyway, um, including the shipping. So I think I saved like 100, 150 bucks buying it directly from Kingsom, Shenzhen Kingsom on Alibaba. I'll, I'll put their page down below if you've got an Alibaba account. So yeah, these things are great. Anyway, leave your comments down below what uh, fume extraction method methods are you using at home? Do you just have a fan that just blows it out? Do you not bother? Do you just suck it up? And <laughs> yeah, been doing it all my life. No problem with me. And of course, I'm not sure how often you'd actually replace the filters on these. I don't do a huge amount of soldering. I'm doing production soldering uh, in the lab. Have done in the past and things like that where I'm just soldering all day. But um, yeah, I don't know. I'll put in the price if I can find the price for the uh, replacement air filters for these. But anyway, it's much cheaper than the uh, Pace Solution, which I believe is exactly the same brand. This is, I believe this is the company who actually manufacture it. It's an identical looking model. All the buttons, all the controls, everything's the same. The catches are the same it's yeah <laughs> they just put the paste uh, brand on it and sell it for twice as much but you know you don't blame them maybe it's you know they've got a few little tweaks in there one perhaps but um yeah you can get the same model for much less bargain anyway hope you enjoyed that if you did please give it a big thumbs up as always discuss down below or over on the ev blog forum and my library channel as well catch you next time Hello.